Welcome to an introduction to vocal diction using the International Phonetic Alphabet. We use IPA in our voice classes and in our choirs. Using a system provides teachers and students a concise way to approach diction in all languages that we typically encounter. Additionally, it makes marking music consistent and quick. Learning this system empowers you as you continue your vocal journey and growth into college and beyond. You might even sing in a community choir one day where you will no doubt encounter IPA. Before we get started, let's go over some definitions. First of all, what is the International Phonetic Alphabet? It is a set of symbols that were originally developed by linguists to describe the sounds of spoken languages. Today, all over the world, voice teachers and choir directors use IPA for consistency in their lessons and their rehearsals. It makes it easy when everybody is in agreement about what a symbol represents in sound. Next, a phoneme. What is a phoneme? It's simply an individual sound or a group of different sounds that are perceived to be a single sound. Orthographic is the ABC spelling of a word. The word cat is spelled C-A-T. That's an orthographic spelling, but its phonemes would be k -a -t, and would not look like C-A-T. An allophone is a distinct variant of a phoneme. Think about the United States of America. The way we sing in Texas is not the same way as people who sing in Chicago or California or Oregon or New York or Maine. And even in European countries, there are distinctions between regions. In Italy, there's a Northern Italian pronunciation a mid-Roman pronunciation, and a Southern Italian. You've heard the word diphthong in your choirs, but did you know there was also a monophthong, a sound that is a single sound throughout its entire position? E, O, E. My lips and my tongue stayed exactly in the same place. When I go to the diphthong, I start with one vowel shape and position, and then I morph into another one right at the end of the word. The word I, my, by, boat, moat, goat are examples of English words that are diphthongs. And we want to stay on that primary vowel and then right at the end go to the secondary vowel so that the listener knows exactly what the word is. If we don't go to the secondary vowel, I becomes ah, and by becomes ba. And so if we're singing ba ba black sheep versus by by by, we can hear that we have a monothong and a diphthong. Lastly, the triphthong are three symbols joined together. Fire is an example of a triphthong. Here is an interactive IPA chart that you can download from your, for yourself from ipachart.com. Our students love this chart because they can practice hearing the sound. You simply choose a symbol and it will give you the sound that it represents. In English, that's not as important as when we go into foreign languages and we want to mimic what we hear. Notice this sentence right here, where symbols appear in pairs, such as these pairs right here, the one to the right represents a rounded vowel. So it's the same vowel placement, either closed, mid, closed mid, open mid, or open, or forward, mid, and back vowels, but with our lips closed or rounded around the vowel. Let's listen to the way some vowels that we know really well 
sound like. Let's listen to them. So here's our eval. This would be spelled, for instance, B E E, as in B, the buzzing B. But notice that the IPA symbol for it is a single letter symbol that looks like the letter I, but it's not I, it's E, and it sounds like this E. E. Let's practice that. E. E. Now take that same vowel, pronounce it the same way, except we're going to round our lips over it. Listen to how it sounds. E. 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 Let's do another. Let's go to position one, two, three, four, five. Let's go to position two. This is position one, two, three, four, and five, all the way in the back. Position one, we did an eval. Now we're going to position two. This looks like a capital I, but it's not called I, it's I, and it sounds like this. I. I. And now let's do that again. I. I. Now round your lips. I. 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 So it's the same placement in position number two. Our vowel, our tongue's in the same spot, but our lips are now rounded. Let's go do a back vowel. This looks like the letter U. Let's see what it sounds like. Ooh. 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 Uh. So those are very similar, but they are not the same. Ooh. Uh. Say should. Should. I should go to the store. Ooh. Uh, this is a hard vowel for us to pronounce. Notice it looks like a horseshoe. It's an upsilon. So this is a chart that you would like to have in your own. You can put on your OneDrive or whatever, you your OneNote, and you can go and practice what vowels sound like. Let's practice the schwa. Uh. Uh, notice it's mid and it's closed mid. Let's practice this vowel. Can you guess what this is going to sound like? Let's see. A. A. Now be careful that this does not become a diphthong. A. In A. 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 We want that to stay. B. B. A. 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 What's it sound like with a round vowel? A. A. This is a German and a French vowel. And we can get into that later. But today we're going to go on and we're going to do some work in English. Here's a chart that shows us phonemes in English. Remember that a phoneme is a sound. We have a chart of vowels and we have a chart of consonants. Sometimes you will find a chart, depending upon the source you use, that uses an a ah vowel that looks a little bit different. The a ah vowel for this chart looks like this symbol right here. Sometimes you will see this symbol turned back the other direction for the a ah vowel. In this chart though, the a ah vowel looks like this symbol right here. So it depends upon what source you're using. And you just have to know that. Let's look at some symbols. A uh, cup. Ah. Father. Notice that there are two dots following this symbol. That means that we're going to elongate that vowel. Father. Cat. Away. Here's our schwa. Sofa. Cinema. Away. This is an unstressed syllable. This is a stressed syllable. Notice here that our eval, met and bed, looks like this symbol right here. In a few minutes, we're going to get to a different way of writing this eval. So this is a chart that I would fix for my own students. Turn. Here's a backward epsilon with a hook. Hit. C. Notice we're going to elongate. Let's look at some consonants. These consonant symbols look like the letter that they represent until we get to this semi-glide here. Yes, yellow. But we want to call this B, D, F, G, H. 
If we're doing the alphabet, we call this B, D, F, G, H. But you know from studying languages other than English that in other languages, we don't pronounce those alphabetical letters the same way. So in IPA, we want to call them by their sound. B, D, F, G, H. Okay, let's just look down here for just an example. She, crash, check, church. Think both this mother with. Okay, now let's go on and look at a new chart to just show us our quadrilateral in English. Let's look at some English vowel phonemes. This is a nice, easy quadrilateral to first study. The quadrilateral that we looked at earlier had other language phonemes in with it. It's a more inclusive, interactive chart. This chart helps you just see specifically English vowels. Notice the ah vowel here, like I described earlier. This is the way I normally write my ah vowel in English. I use the earlier one for other languages, especially German and Italian. So let's look at our high, mid, and low. So this is the placement in our mouth. High and front, E. Notice my vowel is very forward, it's high. Mid, E. So now I'm in the middle, but I'm still forward. And then low, A. Uh, it's low down here. Then I have a central unstressed schwa, sofa. It's mid sofa. Not so full, but sofa. So it's mid, but it's not so fit. Because if it were so fit, it would be this vowel right here. So e, 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 e. Here's our epsilon, the way I am accustomed to writing the e vowel as in bed, and a as in cat. Here are our back vowels. We have to be super careful because if we sing these vowels too far back, all the way back here at five, they get a little woofy and we don't get a brilliant sound. So when we sing, we want to make sure they're nice and br nice and brilliant. Ooh, uh, should, oh, pillow, ah, awesome, I ought to go, and ah. Let's practice. Ooh, uh, should, oh, pillow, ah. Ought, ah, father, sofa, beat, bit, bit, bet, bat. You can practice the front vowels using a b and a t on either side, like bookends of those vowels for good practice. Now let's look at some English consonant phonemes. We looked earlier, but I want to talk about these pairings. The way this IPA chart is set up, we have pairs of similar consonant phonemes. You might have heard your teachers discuss voiced and voiceless consonants. If you put your hand in front and you do a puh, puh, you will feel a puff of air. Puh. Let's do the odd numbers and let's feel that air in front. Puh. Puh. Ch. 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 Those are voiceless. Now let's take our hand and place it on our larynx, right here in our throat, and we'll practice the pairs, the even numbers of the pairs, and those are the voiced consonants. They're the same consonant, but without, they, but uh, you could sing on them, but, and you can feel a vibration in your larynx, but, but, 
da da ja ja ga ga v v z z z z so these are paired voiceless and voiced consonants notice that this chart helps us really understand how important it is to use IPA. Look at the orthographic spelling of these four words. Let's pronounce them together. She, sure, emotion, leash. Notice that we have four words with three different spellings orthographically of the same sound. But when we replace them with an IPA symbol, each one of these would have this symbol here. Shh, 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 shh. Imagine if you are from a foreign country and you are a are, um, non-English speaking country, rather, and you see this word for the first time, emodion. Well, we would giggle and say, well, that's emotion. But we wouldn't know that if we were not already an English speaker. So it helps those singers to have an IPA symbol that shows that this TI here is pronounced the same as this SH and as this plain S. So this is not sure, this is sure, just like this is leash and this is emotion. Let's look at this beautiful vowel that we borrow from French. Pleasure. Beige. Look how differently they're spelled orthographically, but they use this same symbol. So this just shows us how important it is that we learn our IPA and we use it so that when we sing in a foreign language, we know exactly the way it is supposed to be pronounced. Finally today, let's look at IPA in action. Here is an IPA sheet from ipasource.com. This is for a beautiful aria that many people sing, and in, in, even high schoolers sing this song, this aria from the opera Dido and Aeneas by Henry Purcell. You'll see that we have, because it's in English, we have two lines. We have the orthographic, Thy hand, Belinda, darkness shades me. Underneath it, we have the IPA transcription. What we don't have is a word-for-word -word translation because it's in English. When you get a sheet from IPA source, if it's in a foreign language, it will also give you a word-for-word -word translation. So we can see that we have symbols to represent each one of these words. Here we have a unique symbol to English, when. It looks like a funny M or an upside down W. It is when, when. Here's our epsilon, when I, here's their sample of your diphthong. Am, laid, there's a diphthong, in, this symbol here means that we put a glottal stop in front. In English, when we have a word that begins with a vowel, we put a little stop in front of it. Laid in earth. It looks like a question mark without a dot, but it's actually a glottal stop. Earth. Here we know that the TH in the word earth is pronounced voiceless. Earth. We also see that there's no American R in here. This is an English-British piece, uth. So we just negate that R. Me, my, wrongs, create. Here we have a tapped R that's flipped. Not wrongs, but wrongs. Just a flipped or tapped R. So you can see how important these IPA transcription pages are because you can have consistency in your own singing. I hope that this helped and gave you a good introduction to IPA today. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you again soon.